to talk a little bit more about uh, this holy trinity of three things. It's a holiday uh, today. Uh, we have a topology, finite topologies, finite graphs, finite simplicial complexes, and they're all related, essentially the same thing. You can go from topology to graphs by looking at the Czech graph or the Czech complex. You can look at the, from a complex, you can go to a graph. From a graph, you can go to a complex. So there are different ways how you can go from one to the other, and then you can relate that to other mathematics like uh, differential equations and arithmetic or algebra. So I've had a couple of definitions here, just the main definitions which we need. I want to kind of make two remarks which just uh, came up this week while running. I just uh, realized uh, something here about the Lefschetz in the case of top topology. And uh, I also, by doing new experiments with uh, this uh, connection calculus matrices, I just saw something which I did not see before and I didn't think about it in a topological way. So if you have a finite abstract simplicity complex, a finite set of non-empty sets, closed under the operation of taking non-empty subsets, then you can look at the topology, a natural topology, motivated also by Zariski, you just take the simplicity of complexes inside these complexes, closed sets. Closed sets are the simplicity of subcomplexes, and a basis is given by the stars. So the stars are very important. The star of a, of a simplex is just all the simplices which, are, which contain this. So this is a, a base of a topology. This finds, defines a finite topology. It's a T0, it's not T1, it's not T2, it's not Hausdorff. It doesn't matter. We can think about this as atoms of space because you cannot decompose them anymore. So it's been studied from the 30s, by, especially by Alexandrov. So we have a, a base of a finite topology, and then we have also, we can define a graph. You know, if you have a base and a sort of cover, you have this check uh, a graph, which is connects to open sets, which you consider in the covering, and which, which have a non-empty intersection, and defines, this defines then a graph. And this graph has a Whitney complex, which is a, uh, the simplicity complex associated to the topology. So every finite topological space, you know, if you have given a base, also defines a simplicity complex and a, a, a graph. So you can study that, uh, especially if you have a simplicity complex, you can then define an exterior derivative. So that's the exterior derivative, which comes once you have come, you have just arbitrarily every of the simplices you have ordered. That's the orientation of y in x. If y is compatible with the orientation of x, then it's 1 and otherwise minus 1. And that's called the exterior derivative. Then we have a, this is an n times n matrix. If you have n, uh, n elements in your, uh, in your simplicity complex, and then we have a Dirac operator, we have a Hodge operator, these are symmetric matrices, right? And then we have the kernel of the LK. This, this decays into, into blocks, and each of these Hodge blocks has, uh, if you have as a kernel, this you call the homology, case homology, and then the B case that is the, uh, these are the Betty numbers. So you can compute that also for any topological space. And uh, then we have these uh, relations, which I mentioned a couple of times already. The Euler characteristic is one of the most important quantities in mathematics. Now there is also a quadratic version, which I have started a couple of years ago, which it doesn't just take this individual, you know, omega x is mine. You look at the heat flow here and you look at the super trace of that, it doesn't change. And t is equal to zero, you have the super trace of one, which is the Euler characteristic. If t is equal to infinity, then e to the t l has killed everything except the zero eigenspaces. And then you get the uh, traces on the cohomology group, which is nothing else than the Betty numbers. And the same proof, you know, just one line proof also works for, uh, for the Wu characteristic. And this generalizes, you have a simplicial map on a simplicity complex. A simplicial map is just a map mapping simplices into simplices. 
So you have a simplicity of map, but then you look at the fixed, the simplicities which are fixed. And so this is all finite, right? And then you have the, the super trace on the cohomology, that's the, called the Lefschetz number. So if F is the identity, this is nothing else than the Euler characteristic. That's why the notation is kind of similar than the Euler characteristic. And then you have also, uh, for every fixed point, you have an index, because F induces the permutation on the index, on the, on the simplex itself, then uh, this sign of the permutation, this is the sign of the permutation of F when you're restricted to X, that's, uh, and then times omega X, that's the index, and then you add up all these indices, then you get, this. also this can be proven by the heat, using the heat flow, it's essentially again one line proof, you just take this common operator, this, you know, uh, you know, what you have in dynamics, you take a, a L2 function and you, you map it into the shifted L2 function, then you apply, uh, you apply the e to the minus t L to it. And then, so what happens in t equal to zero, what you have is that when t is equal to zero, you have just the, the this, you have kind of just the, you know, you, you look just at the, if you look at the trace, the super trace of that, that's actually just the super trace of that. And then when you apply the heat flow at t equal to infinity, what happens is only the, on the com the cohomology matters. So it's only the tra super trace on the cohomology. The super trace on the cohomology is the Lefschetz number. That's pretty cool. And that's pretty cool because, uh, for example, if, uh, if the cohomology is trivial, like for a space which is contractible, then uh, this is a space which is contractible, homotopic to one. So the down set, for example, which is not, cannot be uh, contracted, but uh, which is homotopic to one. It's also the cohomology is trivial, so there is a fixed point. So this is a, a pretty cool. This is the Brouwer special case. So if you have a wall and a con continuous map on it, it has always a fixed point. Now, I just, that's kind of something which I, I did not formulate this in terms of topology, but you can do that. With a finite topological space, finite set of sets, which is closed under the intersection and uh, union, and which has contains the empty set and X itself, that's a finite topology. Then, uh, and a continuous map has the inverse image of an open set is open. So, if you have that, then there is always, and, the, and then you can, from this topology, you can get the complex and you can compute the cohomology and you can see whether. You know, the com if the cohomology is trivial, then there is always a fixed open set. <laughs> so an open set is just an intersection of such basis elements, right? So that the, the, this check uh, uh, is if, if k if k open sets intersect, this is a k dimension k minus one dimensional simplex is fixed, but this corresponds to an open set. So there are, there's always a fixed open set. And you can count even kind of if you have, if, if, if the cohomology is not trivial, you can still kind of sometimes if the Lefschetz number is not zero, you can make, uh, you can make statements. So this is uh, one uh, a remark. There's another remark which uh, it kind of, uh, this topology really opened my eyes because what happened is I was looking at this before. This is the energy theorem, which is in, in 2016. Uh, I bothered even publishing it, and so this is uh, what happens: is you, you you define this matrix L, which is just you have two simplices. If they intersect, you have one, and otherwise you have zero. And this is a zero-one matrix. And it, uh, what I realized is this matrix is always invertible and has integer uh, determinant is one or minus one. And then uh, the inverse. I thought quite a bit uh, about. Uh, finding this formula here, so this formula here tells that uh, tells what the what the entries are of the inverse matrix. These are the green function entries, and when you look at what, ha what happens in topology with green uh, functions, these are potential energies between two uh, simplices. So it's kind of you think about simplices as kind of your your uh, your points. Then this is the potential energy between two points, but it involves this. Uh, atoms, these stars. And uh, actually when I was looking for that I, for many months I could not find a formula because I looked at kind of the closure, I looked at simplicial complexes here, I looked at the Euler characteristic, Euler characteristic of simplicial complexes and, uh, and that's not the same 
and the oil characteristic of open sets. I mean, you have to be, I mean, the oil characteristic of a closure can be, I don't know, different than the oil characteristic of a, of a uh, open set. So these intersections can actually be quite complicated in higher dimensions. It's one of the reasons why topology in one dimension, two dimensions, maybe also three dimensions is rather simple, while in higher dimensions things can become more complicated. Even these basic atoms can, com can, can intersect in a complicated way and produce, uh, produce here oil characteristic, which is not what you would expect, right? If you would expect two open sets, smallest open set intersecting, you would expect that if they you know, that, that the other characteristic is, is, is one, but they can intersect in many, many big, complicated different ways. So these are, these are, uh, this is actually quite, quite surprising. It was just surprising for me. And uh, uh, now when I looked at that, I had looked already at this thing and I didn't see this happening for the analog uh, definition for the Wu characteristic. I didn't work. And uh, now I kind of understood why it didn't work. What I did is kind of, if you look at this, what happens in the case of the Wu characteristic is that you have to look at the, so the, 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 the real kind of important thing is that you take here, this definition here, and this is different. So I had looked at that. So you look at my old code, it's all public. Uh, I have published also the Mathematica code. But that's what I took as the computation. X intersection with Y is not empty. And that is fine as long as if, uh, you know, if you have a simplicity complex, if you have a closed set. The closed set. But these sets are not closed. These sets are open. So this is an open set. It's an intersection of two open sets. And so what can happen is that these two open sets intersect but then uh, what you have is if you look, compute the, Euler, the, the Wu characteristic of such of a subset which is open, it can happen that they intersect. But that's what I do here, kind of in this case. I'm actually looking at the, not the Euler characteristic, but I look at the Wu characteristic of the intersection. And then the same uh, formula works. But in this case, that's kind of still, I, I don't understand what it actually is, what this matrix actually is. This matrix is no more unimodular. In this case, the matrix was unimodular. In this case, it's no more unimodular. And I don't know uh, whether there is some significance with the with the inverse of that uh, matrix. So that's what I wanted to say today.